Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy. Welcome to The Last Lap. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down everything that happened from CODA. But before we hop into it, just want to remind you guys to hit that like button and subscribe button. You can also check out our social media pages, which are linked in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop straight into it. I have my friend and co-host Matthew joining me on the show as always. And man, we have a lot to talk about. It was a big race in CODA today. We're going to break down everything. But Matthew, how you doing first and foremost before we go ahead and hop into everything? Well, we just wrapped up an uh, amazing weekend at Circuit of the Americas. Um, in my opinion, this is my favorite road course on the schedule just because of the, just the, the unique turns, the elevation, the, the almost 300-foot tall observation tower. I mean, this is an amazing place to go to, amazing venue, and it was a fun weekend to uh, watch some watch some of the first road course race of the season. All right, so I'm gonna quickly recap the truck and Xfinity race, but Zane Smith, he was able to go back to back. Actually, Zane Smith for trucks and AJ Allmendinger for Xfinity were both able to go back to back, repeating from last year. Zane Smith in the trucks, he was able to get the win. Uh, Kyle Busch, he raced in the Truck Series race. He has had a little bit of bad pit strategy. He had a caution come out at the wrong time, cost him some track position. And Ross Chastain, he was also pretty strong. He had a fuel pressure issue, so that unfortunately took him out of contention. And AJ Allmendinger goes back-to-back. -back. He held off William Byron uh, in the Xfinity Series. He was pretty strong all day long. But Allmendinger wins in Xfinity. But let's go ahead and talk about the main event, the Cup Series race. And before they even completed one lap, there was already a pretty big crash. Uh, apparently, it looks like Brad Keselowski, he ended up spinning out by himself. And then, unfortunately, Ty Dillon and Jimmy Johnson got involved as well. And that ended both of their days. Very sad start to uh, Jimmy Johnson's uh, first two races with Petty GM, or not P Petty GMS, Legacy Motor Club. Um... It was unfortunate he didn't even really com get to complete a full lap during the race without his day getting ended early. So hopefully he can come back for whatever his next race is and have a good run because I was very sad to only not even see him finish a lap and see him getting interviewed very quickly after the race started. Um, another incident, uh, Bubba Wallace, he... I'm not really sure what happened, but he pretty much wiped out Kyle Larson going into turn 12, I think it is. It's the first corner. It's the left-hand corner uh, after the backstretch. And it looks like Bubba, he either locked up the brakes or didn't have any brakes or something like that. The car just rolled through the corner and just slammed Kyle Larson in the ref left rear. Kind of like what happened to Larson at Indy Road Course, almost. Except, um, like, Bubba wasn't going as fast, I don't think, but... Unfortunate there, that would end Bubba's day. Kyle Larson was able to continue, but uh, never really had a car capable of winning after that. So tough end of the day right there for Bubba. Um, and then on the same lap, uh, Kyle Larson was like trying to get, or Bubba was trying to get to pit road, and Kyle Larson was trying to avoid him, and Denny Hamlin ended up spinning uh, Kyle Larson. So Kyle Larson got a double whammy from the Toyotas there. So I don't, I don't know what was wrong with uh, Kyle Larson and the Toyotas, but they just they just didn't like him today. But a uh, tough break there for Kyle Larson. Uh, William Byron would win the first stage. The caution came out for that wreck, I believe, and that's what it. It was weird because the stage ended as they took the green flag, so it wasn't. So the choose rule really played a matter of who got stage points and who didn't because it was whoever crossed the line when the restart went green when they kept going and restarted the race. So that was kind of weird, but William Barron won the first stage. Uh, during that caution, Tyler Reddick, he pitted and gave up some track position, but uh, William Byron and Austin Sinek and a few other pretty good contenders, they stayed out to gain, st keep that track position. So it was pretty much a, William Byron and Austin Sinek were on a two-stop strategy, and Tyler Reddick was on a three-stop strategy. So that cycled through. Byron and uh, Sindrick and all of them made their pit stops. Tyler Reddick regained the lead, and Tyler Reddick won the second stage. And then um, Reddick had a pit again, and then he came in, pitted, and he ended up catching and passing William Byron under green after pretty much following a pit stop behind. So Tyler Reddick had such a very fast race car today. I mean, people could tell in practice he was like... Uh, 
half a second faster, I think, in practice than everybody else. So Tyler Reddick was so fast, he was able to catch and pass William Byron under green after making a pit stop, which is unbelievable. Um, and it looked like no matter what happened with Tyler Reddick's strategy, that he was still probably going to win the race because he caught William Byron, and he had to pit one more time, and then Byron had to pit one more time. So they pretty much evened themselves out. It was just going to depend on who had to pit when. But all of that changed with a caution with, I think it was around 23-ish laps to go. And I think this was the caution that was for dirt on the track, which, I mean, yes, it's a silly caution. But at the same time, you don't want to see drivers slipping and sliding and spinning out if there's dirt on the racetrack. So I think that was the right call for that caution to come out. And that pretty much leveled the playing field. Everybody came down, pitted, got four tires, got fuel, everything like that. Um... Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there was... Uh, they went green for a little bit. Tyler Reddick was in the lead. And then there was another caution with 12 laps to go. Brad Kozlowski was slow on the racetrack. That brought out the caution. Um, at, like, this was a really crucial and very interesting part of the race because there were some drivers who were close on fuel some drivers who knew they weren't going to make it some drivers who thought they were going to make it so drivers like christopher bell kyle bush denny hamlin they pitted before that caution came out for brad Kozlowski and they were able to get some track position on the restart and then william byron um tyler wreck everybody else pitted once that caution came out and those few drivers I mentioned before, they had the track position, so they were able to start out front for that restart with just inside 10 laps to go. And it didn't really matter because Tyler Reddick started a restart of fifth, and he regained the lead after turn one. So Tyler Reddick, he just had a incredible race car today. But he jumped up to the lead, and there was a caution in turn one for Ross Chastain, uh, Austin Dillon, and A.J. Allmendinger. AJ Allmendinger, his day would end. Austin Dillon and Ross Chastain would keep going. Um, on the next restart, William Byron was able to take the lead away from Tyler Reddick. And, but after a few very good laps of battling back and forth with William Byron and Tyler Reddick, Reddick was able to take the lead back once again. And then there was another caution for Debris. And this set up overtime. And that led to three more overtime restarts. Just complete chaos Turn one is just, uh, turn one is something else at Coda. It's just, you go up the hill and then you just funnel down four or five, six wide, uh, like more than 90 degree turn. Fenders are going to bump, people are going to get aggressive and people are just going to keep spinning out and parts are going to fly off the car and call for debris cautions. That happened like three times. So, um, but after all that, Tyler Reddick was able to hang on and win at Coda he was able to hold off Kyle Busch, William Byron, Ross Chastain, Alex Bowman, and some others in some late restart situations. Um, but let me quickly go over the race results, and then I'll go over my quick post-race thoughts. So Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, Ross Chastain, William Byron, those are the top five. Austin Cindric bounces back to sixth. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., seventh. Chris Buescher, eighth. Two great runs for those guys. Ty Gibbs, ninth. Back-to-back -back top tens for him. And Todd Gilliland finishes 10th. Great run for him. If I'm not mistaken, he also finished in the top 10 at Indy Road Course, I believe, last year. So great run for Todd Gilliland to get a top 10. Survived all the chaos. Good run for him. And then I want to quickly touch on the four, uh, I guess, man, how do I say it? The four stars, I guess, in the race. Um, Jensen Button in the number 15 car finished 18th. Jordan Taylor, that was replacing Chase Elliott, he finished 24th. Just not a good day for Jordan Taylor, unfortunately. Ever since the right when the green flag dropped, he started 4th. He dropped outside the top 10 in just the first few laps. And I think he was really just not expecting to get roughed up the way he did and the way everybody else was. So, tough run for Jordan Taylor there, finishing 24th. Kimi Raikkonen finished 29th. He was up in the top 10 uh, in those final few restarts, just got shuffled back. Not really sure what happened to him. Probably got involved in some type of accident or something like that. And Jimmy Johnson, 38th, unfortunately, after getting involved in that lap one incident. But now on to my post-race thoughts. Tyler Reddick. I'm going to start with him, the race winner. Dominated this race. He was able to hang on and get the win despite, dif despite different pit strategies. 
um, several late race restarts. He had to hold off Kyle Busch, William Byron. He had several great battles with William Byron for the lead, but he was able to hang on. Definitely earned this win today. And it pains me to ask this question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. I'm going to say, is he the new road course king? And, you know, I don't, he definitely has a great argument for it. He's won three road courses in the past year, last year and this year combined. He's won three road course races. I would love to see, like, him, Chase Elliott, and AJ Allmendinger all, I would like to see all three of them have really good cars and to see the three of them duke it out at the next road course race. Hopefully, it should be by the time Chase is back and healthy, hopefully. Um, but I would love to see the three of them just duke it out and, you know, I'd love to see all of them mix it up and be in like a late race situation for a win. But Tyler Reddick, he's definitely thrown his name into that hat, dominated this race today. And this, I also answered my question from the previous video, from our preview, that this didn't look like it was a, uh, it was a Chevrolet thing from last year because Tyler Reddick, Jumped from Chevy to Toyota and went out there and kicked everybody's butt today. So I think it's definitely a Tyler Reddick thing. He is very good at these road courses. Hopefully he's able to help Toyota out. I know they still kind of struggled a little bit today without him. He pretty much carried Toyota today. I know Christopher Bell is up there a little bit. Ty Gibbs got a top 10. But Tyler Reddick just on a completely different level today. So very interesting to see that it, it is a Tyler Reddick thing. It wasn't a Chevy or Toyota issue. Uh, but Kyle Busch in that number 8 car did finish second, so I guess it's a little bit of both. It was the 8 car and Tyler Reddick's road course skills. Um, but yeah, he definitely makes an argument to be one of the road course kings out there. And this was also the first road course race with no stage cautions. I feel like it definitely made the race a lot more interesting, um, especially with Tyler Reddick pitting under that caution right at the end of the first stage. And then William Byron staying out and the different pit strategies going back and forth. I felt like the race flowed very well up until the end, of course. But and before that, um, I felt like the race was flowing very well. I liked the no stage cautions things. Um, hopefully it plays out well for the other road courses. But I think that was a great decision. And yeah, like I said, hopefully it stays like that. It's a very good thing moving forward. And the late race chaos, I mean... That's just what you're going to get if there's a caution inside 10 laps to go. I think that caution with like 20-something laps to go, I think that was a perfect... I think that, in a perfect world, I think that would have been the best last caution of the race because it was going to be pitch strategy, people having to save fuel, and stuff like that. But, of course, we don't live in a perfect world. Back Keselowski decided to stop on the racetrack, and that brought out a caution with like 12 to go, and then... After that, there's five or six more cautions. So when you get those late race situations on the restarts, everybody's going to be going crazy. People are going to be hitting each other, spinning out. I don't really have an issue with, like, you know, obviously people roughing fenders and spinning out. It's just when there's those wrecks like that, people have to drive all the way around the whole track, and they're spitting debris. They have a tire down. They're spitting rubber out on the racetrack and stuff like that. But I wish there was some type of way to fix that because it's like a 3.4 mile road course and when you wreck in turn one you have to limp your car all the way around the track in order to get back to pit road and that usually brings out a caution for debris so i wish there was some type of way that the cars could just kind of go off the track and get to pit road a different way so they didn't have to limp all the way a track around the track and bring out a debris caution but yeah i don't really have a problem with the drivers racing aggressive that's going to happen in late race restarts anywhere but yeah it's just the debris cautions that ended up killing it at the end there um, and after the race, Daniel Suarez was not too happy with his teammate and Alex Bowman. There's a video going around on Twitter of Daniel Suarez, uh, coming down pit road, bumping his teammate out of the way, and then going past him and running into Alex Bowman and hitting him a few times right near an official as well. So I would not be surprised if there is some type of fine, maybe even a points penalty because it was really close to an official and he was hitting Alex Bowman really hard so yeah just wanted to point that out as well just and after the race thought as well but yeah that was a lot that happened today at Coda I tried my best to stay focused on the race as much as I could I was you know celebrating my birthday with family today so we had the race on I was trying to watch as much as I can but yeah a lot to process after what we saw at Coda today but Matthew what are your thoughts on what we saw 
Man, um, what a race today. Um, first of all, congratulations to Tyler Reddick. His first win with 2311 Racing and with Toyota. Uh, it's been, it was a struggle in the first couple races for him. I mean, he barely had any points, basically, after Fontana. But it seems like now they've finally cleaned things up. He's had two straight top five finishes before this race, and now he's won. He's in the playoffs, so... It's great to see, you know, course 2311 back in victory lane. Um, I do feel bad for um, Bubba Wallace because, I, feel, I mean, he didn't have speed. Like I mean, he wasn't like Tyler Reddick with speed, but it's, when I saw him practice, he was running very good times because he was able to learn from Tyler Reddick with his real course skills. But unfortunately, he had a brake failure there, and he was taken out the race, so. I also do feel bad for the Tyler Reddick fans because, unfortunately, there's a, a certain energy drink company that um, hates having their logo on a die cast. So, no race versus for Reddick fans. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless he runs like a McDonald's or a money line scheme. But uh, other than that, uh, I feel bad for you Reddick fans there if he wins like five races with a monster scheme. But, um... But other than that, he had the best car today. I know William Byron was also very strong, but I feel like Reddick just had the better car overall. And he pretty much proved it today, so he absolutely deserves it, and um, congrats to him. Um, I mean, I, it's pretty ironic how Reddick and Bush finished 1-2, considering what happened last year with um, Reddick leaving the A car for 23-11 prematurely. And, um, of course, Kyle Busch getting the eight. And also, it's funny because those two actually tested with with the uh, Goodyear, the Goodyear tire test earlier in the January at Coda. And Kyle Busch actually said that um, the 45 was just lights out during that test. And what do you know? Those two actually finished one, too, which is kind of ironic there. But, I mean... I mean, it was, uh, it was a great race for Reddick. But um, I'll get, um, I, let me get to uh, the whole Suarez thing at the end. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a fine right there. Um, can't do that. I mean, that's just, that's just reckless right there. Especially in Pibro, you got pit crews around. You got media people around. You got officials around. You can't, you know, bring that into a, to pit road after the race with your race car, so. I expect a penalty on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, as for the race itself, I thought this was a very great race. And with the help of no stage cautions, this felt like a natural race for the first time in years. It seems like we didn't have people, you know, pitting before the stage and that was just messing, make things messed up. This felt natural. And I'm happy to see that. I'm I'm happy to see it on every road course now. I, that's going to make the road courses even better. Um, I thought the racing itself with this with the new package worked very well. I, I of course Tyler Reddick had the best car. He was in deep in traffic during the strategy, and he was able to move through up through the field just fine. So clearly, it looks like the package improved on the road courses. Um. I know the tire fall off, they say, wasn't that good, which that, that sucked. But, um, I mean, the tire, it looked like the tire wear was, they were really wearing out the tires. It's just there wasn't a lot of fall off on the times, according to what they said in the booth. But, yeah, the Goodyear needs to work on that a little bit more. And I want to get to the whole, you know, overtime finish thing, because this thing, I mean, look, can we please stop blaming it on the overtime finish it, overtime rules here? Can we stop blaming it? How about for once we start blaming it on the drivers here for not being professional, not being mature, and just throwing their brain in the garbage and just ramming into other cars when they see it? I mean, I'm, I know Kimi Raikkonen and Jensen Bunn, they were, you see, that, they're just shaking their head in their car in the race. I'm like, you serious? <laughs> I mean, Joe and Taylor even said, like, man, this is 
I'm, I'm, this is pretty much the most times I've been bumped and bumped and everything during a race. And I have my entire career in so. So, I think we need just to start holding these drivers accountable. I don't know if we should start doing like an F1 style, you know, st very strict rule system on the road courses. That if you spin someone out, you get a penalty. Maybe we should start doing that and start getting these drivers' heads that you shouldn't, you know, just because it's overtime doesn't mean you start, you know, making very dumb mistakes when you haven't been making those mistakes all day long until now. So, that's just my, my just, that's just my opinion. I just think these drivers, these next generation of drivers here, compared to the last decade, they're just not, they're just not mature. They don't care anymore about, you know, space or that fact that you might dump someone. So, it's, um... That's just my thoughts on it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was, uh, I thought this was a very great race. Um, amazing strategy. Of course, chaotic finish. Seeing the greats like Kimmy Riken and Jensen Button, Jimmy Johnson in the field, which was, it was fun to see. And yeah, other than that, um, I mean, I'll, I'll miss, uh, I cannot wait for Coda next year. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know what to suggest as far as anything to keep the drivers a little more uh, less aggressive, I guess, and a little more mature, because, like, we can't, I don't know, like, uh, you, ha you don't want to penalize people because then you won't have good racing because you won't have something like last year where we had AJ Almaninger and Rosh Hassan bumping each other like crazy on the final lap. Because I, I want to keep that. I want to keep the, you know, rubbing is racing in NASCAR. But at the same time, you don't want these drivers just sending it into turn one. Like, if they could just get past turn one, I think they'll be okay. Like, that's how it is at Coda. That's how it is at Indy Road Course. If they can just get through turn one without wrecking each other, then I think they're in good shape. So, I, I don't know. I guess, like, that's probably the best opportunity to gain as many spots as you can. But, yeah, I just wish they would figure something out the drivers should figure something out i don't know uh but you know you know nothing. but yeah we're gonna you go ahead nothing's gonna happen anyway because that's what nascar wants they want to fill up those highlight reels on youtube and that's the way you do it so i doubt anything will happen regardless yeah probably not but let's go ahead and rate this race for me Man, I don't know. I don't think this was the best race of the year, but for me, I think it was definitely one of the better ones. So I think I'll give this, I think my best rating of the year so far is an 8 out of 10, I think. So I'll give this a 7.5 out of 10. I liked the no stage cautions rule. It helped the race look a lot more natural. The end of the race was a little bit, you know, choppy and messy and all that kind of stuff. But the best car won the race, in my opinion, you know. So I can't ask for much more than that. Just wish the drivers to have a little bit more respect for each other on those restarts. But overall, still a great race. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Matthew, what are you going to rate this race? I don't give it a 8 out of 10. I think mostly it's because there was no stage cautions ruining the strategy and everything and the flow of the race. And, man, imagine if we had this on ovals now. You think that would change the strategy on the ovals now? That could be something that could be implemented in 2024, maybe. But, um, but yeah, this was a very great race. I had a lot of fun watching it today. And, um, yeah, so I'll just give it a 8 out of 10. Yeah, I don't know about having the no stage cautions on all, all ovals because, um, so also announcement alert Matthew and I were both going to Richmond next weekend together. Like, for that race, I don't want to see a race go 400 laps under green. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't want to see a race go that long. So the stages for racetracks like that, you know, I think they're a good thing. Like, Martinsville, you know, like, for, I guess, the quote-unquote normal ovals, I guess, it would be a good thing to keep the stage cautions. But maybe for, maybe the super speedways, take them away there. I don't know. But, yeah, for, you know, tracks like Richmond and... 
that like that, I think it'd be good to keep the stage cautions because I don't, I don't want to go to Richmond next week with you and see 400 green flag laps. I want, I want to see something, you know, to mix it up. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's kind of just my concluding thought slash announcement that we're both going to go to Richmond next weekend together. So that's going to be fun. Throwing it back to the good old days, back when we used to go pretty much all the time to Richmond together. But Matthew, do you have any other closing thoughts before we go ahead and finish this video out? Hmm. Let's see. How about the fact that um, Chase Elliott is ahead of Ty Dillon in the points? That's kind of sad, to be honest. I don't know how that 77 team is going to survive by the end of this season because there's, I'm just going to be clear. I'm just going to be honest here. Even though I know some of this hasn't been Ty Dillon's fault, but I mean, Ty Dillon is just not a Cub Series driver, in my opinion. I mean, I mean, we've seen a few years of him in the Cub Series, and he hasn't really done much. I mean, I feel like he'll be great in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series, but just not the Cup Series. But, um, I mean, I'm, I don't know how that 77 team is going to survive. They keep, you know, finishing almost dead last every race, it seems like, so far. I mean, Cody Ware is ahead of him the points, and that's saying something. Oh yeah, I also quickly forgot before we end the video to do our fantasy update. So for this race, you got 144 points. I got 177 points. So I gained another 33 on you. I'm slowly but surely catching you. The gap was like over 100. Now it's under 100. It's only 64 points between you and me now. You're at 1,076. I'm, I'm at... Easy. <laughs> I'm at 1,012. So... I am slowly catching you. Hopefully, we can get that gap down even further, make it a little bit more interesting. But, yeah, that's just our fantasy update real quick for you guys. But that's going to go ahead and finish it up for this video. We hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure you check out our social media pages for updates. Our Richmond preview video should be out later this week. But until the next time, we will see you guys in our next video.